The International Energy Agency has revised its forecast for world oil demand upward for the third month in a row, pointing to stronger than expected economic growth in developing Asian economies and North America. IEA says global demand this year and next will be 500,000 barrels a day higher than its last estimate at 84.4 million barrels for this year, 85.7 million for next year. Still, consumption is expected to be down more than 2% compared with last year. Here to talk oil and gas, Elliot Yu of The Energy Strategist. Welcome back, Elliot. Good morning. So how significant is this uh, new IEA forecast? It sounds very positive. It is very positive. I mean, one of the big, the major factor that's been causing oil prices to be generally lower than they were uh, since last summer has been concerns over global demand for oil. Uh, we have seen uh, economic data in the U.S. really pick up pretty aggressively here over the last uh, three months. Starting in the beginning of the year, we saw the Chinese economy reaccelerating. So this is just a, a recognition of that fact that probably that's going to drive oil demand going forward. Does a lot of this, though, have to do with developing countries because the IAA did warn that that demand for the rich countries is still set to, to remain weak for some time. Yeah, in fact, I think that um, you know if you look back over the last five years, something like 85 percent of the growth in demand for oil globally, um, and I'm talking go back five years from last year, um, it, it's almost all come from the developing world. 85 percent has come from the developing world. You know, in fact, um, as we need to make room for that demand, in the sense that you know you have uh, in China, you know, the average consumer uh, uses about a little over two uh, two barrels of oil per person per year. In the United States is more like 19 or 20. As they become wealthier and start to buy cars um, and 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 uh, basically need more transportation, you know, that demand is going to rise. To make room for that that rise in demand, you know, there's going to have to be some demand destruction in the, develop, in the developed world. In other words, people in the developed world are going to have to use a little bit less. Well, then how significant is this? This is from the IEA. The true extent of the demand rebound in China is obscured by massive stock building there. Uh, well, that, is, that has been an issue uh, in the sense that China has been, uh, you know, there's been some strategic building of stockpiles in the sense the government has created a number of, um, similar to our SPR, our Strategic Petroleum Reserve, uh, where they've been building uh, oil reserves. Um, and, of course, also on the commercial side, you know, building uh, uh, oil uh, inventories in China. And, but, you know, that's only natural. As the country, like the United States, becomes a more important user of crude oil, you know, they're going to need to store uh, more and stockpile more domestically to cushion those short-term uh, su uh, supply disruptions and, you know, demand spikes that are, that are typical of any oil consumer. Tell us about y your, your take on OPEC's influence. We had Phil Flynn in here uh, talking about OPEC, and he says OPEC is so yesterday. He said they don't have an influence anymore. Do you agree? Uh, well, you know, the, you've definitely seen an uptick in the cheating going on uh, within the o OPEC cartel, uh, where the compliance has been kind of dropping pretty steadily. Um, obviously, you have some countries like uh, Saudi Arabia that are hold they're actually have cut their production more than they've been targeted to cut. You have other countries which are, which are basically pumping more. The higher oil prices go, the more likely you are to see cheating, uh, because you know as oil prices here in that seventy to eighty dollar range, a lot of these countries are very profitable um, in terms of uh, selling selling oil, and there's a lot of temptation to go out and produce more than their quota. You know, longer term, uh, really the only spare capacity anywhere in the world, in other words, oil production that you know can be turned on and off very quickly and sustained, uh, is within OPEC. Um, a lot of the growth in global oil production capacity over the next 10 years is forecast to come from OPEC. Um, countries like Saudi Arabia are um, you know, developing new fields, um, developing new production within existing fields, and that's really going to be key to the global oil market, I think, going forward. You know, how much of that are they actually able to bring online? How much of that's true new capacity? And how much of it is really them sort of overestimating what they can produce? All right. Okay. Let's move on to natural gas. Uh, still incredibly low, but prices have been rising for several days now. What's your, what's your, uh, what's your forecast for today's inventory report? Uh, well, looking for, again, another build, probably in somewhere around 70 billion cubic feet. Um, you know, again, we're still in that time of year. We, we haven't, uh, we're kind of coming out of the summer heating season, um, our summer cooling season, rather, and we haven't really entered the winter heating season yet, so we're kind of in that shoulder season where, you know, demand isn't particularly strong. Um, I think that you're going to see, I, I think there are a couple of factors at play in the natural gas market. One, has to do with the next few contracts, the next few futures contracts, which is really where most of the weakness has been concentrated. Um, if I look out sort of towards the middle of next year, natural gas prices are much, much higher. Uh, futures for expiry, say, in the middle of next year. And they really haven't changed that much over the last couple of months. I think the problem over the next couple of months is that traders are very worried about when exactly U.S. natural gas storage is going to fill up. 
and what exactly is the amount of natural gas in storage well, when it's full. What we're hearing is that this glut of industrial gas and power plant gas is about to ease. Is that significant? Is it possible we never have this capacity problem? I don't. I, I think it's. I think it's likely that we will hit maximum capacity between now and um, November. November, simply because. You remember, we, we've been building faster than normal uh, for some months now because that industrial demand was so weak and because that, uh, the, the sort of spillover glut from last year's drilling boom uh, took a while to sort of work through the system. However, I think that is important as we move into next year. You know, we saw the uh, ISM uh, number, uh, which basically indicates whether there's expansion or contraction within the manufacturing economy. For the first time since 2007, it was actually above 50, indicating expansion. Mm -hmm. Um, that would suggest that uh, industrial demand for natural gas will begin to rebound as we move into 2010. That's a number that comes out every month. We ex you expect it to be over 50 next time as it, well? It actually was over 50 uh, this last time. It was almost at 53, uh, which is really the highest level since back before this whole recession and credit crunch started. Mm -hmm. um, and that indicates, again, expansion in the manufacturing economy. It actually indicates that the manufacturing economy in the United States is rebounding more quickly than the service economy. So it'd be um, unlikely that number would go back below 50 in the next report. I think it's very unlikely that it's going to go back below 50. I think it'll probably carry on a little bit higher uh, generally over the next uh, you know few few months, and that's going to indicate, and that tends to indicate with somewhat of a lag, that we will see an uptick in industrial industrial gas use. The other thing to look at is that the United States has the lowest natural gas prices in the world right now. Uh, so if you're a U.S. manufacturer. Um, you know, you, you really love that um, in the sense that, you know, your energy costs are a lot lower uh, than they are anywhere else in the world. Now, obviously, labor costs you know, in a place like China would be much lower, but that is a competitive, you know, our, our domestic natural gas supply is somewhat of a competitive advantage for U.S. manufacturers. Right. Um, okay, so demand, the big month for demand to increase for natural gas is November. Now, is that true for industrial use as well? Uh, not so much. Um, you know, basically the, uh, the cycle for natural gas um, has a lot to do with that heating demand and, and, summer to, and, and somewhat the summer cooling demand. But that winter heating season is still uh, absolutely crucial uh, to the natural gas market in terms of, a, of, a, of, a, of demand. Now last year we actually saw heating demand for natural gas go up even though the economy was in recession. And it was really a real collapse in industrial demand that caused that glut to build. You know, this year it'll be interesting uh, to see how cold this winter is compared to normal. Um, if it's a little bit colder than normal or about normal, um, I think that with production dropping off as quickly as it is, you could see natural gas inventories sort of normalize by, say, next spring. Um, and if that's the case, you know, I think you're going to see somewhat higher natural gas prices, five, probably in that 5 to $6 so range. So you're checking your farmer's almanac now? I, I, I am, and, you know, that's, it's always subject to a lot of, uh, of, um, of guesswork when it comes to predicting the weather, obviously. But... Uh, you know, if, even if it's just a normal winter, um, there are a lot of people out there projecting right now, a lot of the producers are saying that U.S. natural gas production could be down as much as 5 billion cubic feet uh, a day uh, by uh, next spring. If that's true uh, and demand is sort of normal this winter and we see an uptick in industrial demand, it really would not take that long uh, to normalize those inventories. Okay. We are watching, as I know you are. Elliot Gu, Energy Letter, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.